welcome back students we are into the recap of opportunistic mycosis we have already discussed candidiasis cryptococcosis and aspergillosis and now we'll go into zygomycosis pneumocystosis penicilliosis and fusariosis coming to the laboratory diagnosis of aspergillosis on direct microscopy of sputum ball transbronchial biopsy or koh bound you can see these are the long septate hyphae which are narrow angled and thin and on histopathological staining also you see these are the septate hyphae of aspergillus with acute angle branching after the laboratory diagnosis we come into this slide which is very important because in this slide i would like to tell you the difference between aspergillus and uh, zygomycetes the difference between aspergillus and zygomycetes so this is important because after the covid pandemic there were huge number of cases of mucor mycosis so you need to differentiate between aspergillus and mucor and why this is important because the treatment of both the infections is very different so let me explain here in aspergillus there are narrow septate hyphae with acute angle branching so you can see here the hyphae are septate and there is acute angle branching whereas in mucor there are broad hyphae can you appreciate the difference between the narrow hyphae and the broad hyphae and these look like ribbon like so this is a word which you should remember that they are ribbon like right angled and there are no septa in mucor now the tip here to remember is in aspergillus there is as so a there will be acute angle branching and there are septate hyphae but these are broad angle right angle branching broad hyphae ribbon like and they are aseptic so i hope you will be remembering now and now on the basis of that we'll solve this question the microscopic image of the fungal pathogen stained with gomery methanamine silver stain is given below identify the correct option so you see here in this image there are narrow hyphae they are septate and there is acute angle branching so hence this is aspergillus so your answer is option d this is showing acute angle branching and this is aspergillus now coming to the culture of aspergillosis fungal culture done on sda at 25 degree celsius there is pigments which are produced and uh, smoky green is the characteristic of aspergillus fumigatus which is the most common species which is encountered antigen detection can be done galactomannan antigen assay is done and it has been asked in questions and it indicates invasive aspergillosis antibody detection can also be done allergic syndrome due to aspergillus show elevated ige levels so whenever there is elevated ige levels and also galactomannan antigens and other tests are positive you can uh, move towards a diagnosis of aspergillosis detection of alpha 13 glucan is done by g test which i have already discussed under candidiasis coming to the treatment abpa is treated with itraconazole invasive aspergillosis voriconazole is the drug of choice amphotericin b can also be used chronic pulmonary aspergillosis voriconazole or itraconazole is used so basically azoles are used for treatment of aspergillosis and aspergilloma which i have told you is a fungal ball and surgery is indicated if it is a single fungal ball present in the patient so zygomycosis or mucor mycosis the name which you have must have encountered a lot during the covid pandemic because there were a huge number of cases of mucor mycosis all over india so zygomycosis or mucor mycosis is a acute or chronic opportunistic fungal infection caused by fungal agent belonging to the phylum zygomycota these are basically saprophytic fungi and are not usually causing infections in human except when they is immune compromised status the zygomycete are lower fungi with aseptate hyphae or very sparsely septate hyphae so i have already discussed under aspergillosis that they have broad aseptate hyphae there are important examples are order mucorils rhizopus mucor rhizomucor and absidia these are the four names which are very important and if you remember this that's enough 
coming to the pathogenesis, the various risk factors are diabetic ketoacidosis, end stage renal disease, patients on iron therapy and neutropenia. The infection occurs by inhalation and also there can be inoculation or ingestion but this is the major mode of uh, transmission of the infection. There is phagocytosis, polymorphonuclear neutrophils and macrophages which play a critical role in the pathogenesis. These fungus require iron as a growth factor. Hence, it explains that why in cases of uh, end stage renal disease and patients on dialysis and the patients on iron therapy are prone to develop this infection. Uh, the increased risk factor in ketoacidosis patients is also there which is due to the release of iron bound proteins and also the serum of patients with ketoacidosis stimulates the growth of uh, mucor. Now coming to the clinical manifestation, a patient who arrives look like this who is actually suffering from rhinocerebral zygomycosis which is the most common clinical manifestation. Here it is a fulminant disease and there is a spread from the nasal mucosa to the turbinate sinuses, palate and finally to the brain. The clinical features are facial pain, headache, sinusitis. This is one of the commonest uh, feature with which the patient presents. There is loss of vision, blood stain, nasal discharge and there is black crusting or the ishar on the palate and there is proptosis. Maybe because of this black crusting this fungus was also called as black fungus in media or the newspaper however they are not a black fungus. So this is the clinical image of a patient suffering from rhinocerebral zygomycosis. If untreated the patient can die within a week. The CT and MRI is also done along with the tissue biopsy and sent for fungal culture and diagnosis where there is bone destruction. Orbital zygomycosis occurs and the patient presents like this in which there is chemosis, periorbital cellulitis, ophthalmoplegia, proptosis, ptosis and there is abrupt visual loss. Pulmonary zygomycosis occurs due to inhalation of the sporangiospore and the patient presents with chest pain, dyspnea and hemoptysis. Cutaneous zygomycosis, gastrointestinal zygomycosis is very rare. Other manifestations are isolated renal zygomycosis and disseminated infection most commonly which occurs to the lung and there can be also dissemination to kidney, GI tract, heart and brain. Coming to the laboratory diagnosis, we have already discussed we take the nasal discharge or the biopsy from the nose and when seen under the microscope, it occurs like this where you can appreciate broad ribbon like aseptate hyphae with wide angle or right angle branching which is indicating towards the diagnosis of zygomycosis. And histopathology also you can appreciate there are broad ribbon like aseptate hyphae with uh, right angle branching. So this difference we have already discussed under aspergillus. Uh, aspergillus show narrow septate hyphae with acute angle branching and mucor shows broad aseptate hyphae with ribbon like appearance and right angle branching. Now which of the following fungus is the most common cause of orbital cellulitis in a diabetic patient? So here your answer is obviously rhizopus. This is an easy question. Aspergillus can also cause the such infection but in diabetic patient the most common cause is rhizopus. When you culture uh, zygomycota fungi, then they appear like this cottony woolly colonies uh, which are initially white but they later become black and this appearance is known as salt and pepper appearance. Now coming to the treatment, a combination of surgical debridement of necrotizing tissue and antifungal drugs are given. Localized regions are treated surgically. Amphotericin B deoxycholate is the treatment of choice. So here is the difference between the treatment of aspergillosis and mucor and hence we need to differentiate while diagnosing. Azoles are not useful however posaconazole oral posaconazole has been used so these are the two two drugs which are used in treatment of mucormycosis amphotericin b and oral posaconazole apart from that surgery 
Next is penicilliosis. This is a dimorphic fungi and it causes opportunistic fungal infection in humans. The causative agent is Penicillium marnifi which is a thermally dimorphic fungi which means it exists as yeast form at 37 degree Celsius or human body and as a mold form in the environment and it is endemic in Manipur. This is important because this can be the location of the patient in case a clinical question is asked. So, these are the clinical features. Systemic infection it would mimic histoplasmosis and there are warty skin lesions. Appreciate the skin lesions. Here is the image in which there is warty skin lesion which mimic molluscum contagiosum. When we go to the diagnosis, the direct microscopy of the human sample will show oval elliptical yeast cells. So, appreciate the oval and the elliptical yeast cells with central septations here. So, this is how a penicillium looks. Fungal culture at SDA will show mold growth at 25 and yeast at 37. Coming to the treatment, amphotericin B is used for the treatment of patients in AIDS. Itroconazole can also be used as a maintenance therapy in such patients. Coming to pneumocystis pneumonia, the causative agent is pneumocystis gerovici and this is the life cycle. Infection occurs by inhalation and it undergoes two types of life cycle, asexual and sexual. In sexual life cycle, there is formation of cyst with eight intracystic bodies. It is an extracellular pathogen and the cysts are inhaled and carried to the lung. They are transformed into trophozoids with preferential attachment to the alveolar epithelium. And they induce inflammatory response, recruit plasma cells resulting in formation of frothy exudate filling the alveoli. I emphasis on this words because these can be mentioned in the question that the patient is having frothy exudate which is filling the alveoli. There is interstitial pneumonitis with foamy macrophages and pulmonary pneumocystosis presence like this. So, I have underlined this because this can be the common word which is present in the question in a patient who is suffering from pneumocystis gerovici pneumonia. Cause of atypical pneumonia and it is also called as plasma cell pneumonia or PCP. It occurs in HIV patient with CD4 count less than 200. Extrapulmonary pneumocystosis is rare. Most of the questions which you will be getting will be from pulmonary pneumocystosis. On laboratory diagnosis, this is an image which can be asked as a clinical image based question in which the GMS stain demonstrates the cyst which looks like black color crushed ping pong balls against the green background and if you go for a gymsa staining you can appreciate this cyst which eight intracystic bodies so this is how the pcp uh, pneumonia is diagnosed microscopically it is non cultivable so this is again an important point that this organism cannot be cultivated in any culture media there are no serological tests and next the most important point is the drug of choice which is co Oxazole, which is a combination of trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole. So, you have to remember this point that it is non cultivable and drug of choice is cotrimoxazole. Now, let us answer this question. A 45 year old man present with dyspnea, fever, persistent cough, he is HIV positive. His chest x ray shows ground glass opacities and his bile fluid shows thick walled cyst with 8 intracystic bodies. So, here where you can easily arrive at the diagnosis that the patient is suffering from PCP. Which of the following is the treatment of choice? So, the treatment of choice here is cotrimoxazole because this is a case of PCP. Now, last fusariosis. Here, the causative agent is fusarium, which is a saprophytic fungi and it is a very rare cause of human infections. In immune compromised patient, pulmonary and sinus infection occurred and invasion occurs only in patients with neutropenia and severe immune deficiency. It can cause keratitis in immune competent patient, which has been asked as a question in NEET a uh, few years back and uh, onychomycosis can also occur. In laboratory diagnosis, the colonies are usually fast growing, pale, bright colored with or without aerial cottony mycelium 
and on LPCB mount, what is LPCB? This is a stain, lactophenol cotton bloom mount. There are presence of hyaline septate hyphae with round microconidia and sickle shaped large macroconidia. So, this is the point which you should remember that whenever there is a mention of sickle shaped large macroconidia, then always try to think about fusarium. So, this is the image which you can get in the exam. So, can you see these are the sickle shaped macroconidia. So, hence you can think of fusariosis. Now, here is the question which was asked in the exam in NEET. A farmer with a history of trauma of the left eye with vegetative matter. Whenever there is a trauma with a vegetative matter, please make a point to think towards a fungal keratitis case. Uh, he presented with ulcerative lesion in the cornea whose base is raised soft creamy uh, infiltrate. Ulcer margins are feathery. Again you get another point where you can again still indicates towards a case of fungal keratitis. The corneal scraping shows sickle shaped macroconidia. This is the third point and also you have an image mentioned here which may or may not be there in the exam. Which of the following is the likely pathogen involved? So, hence your answer here is fusarium. So, that is all for the recap. I hope you will be able to answer all the questions now. Thank you.